Okay, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to, since my mother, you say this way, I'd like to get to share in memory of my mother, Zelda Bas Mordechai, Leah Mishma Zelda Bas Mordechai. Um, the topic tonight is, is building a wall a, a reflection of Midat stone? Okay, is, and obviously I'm referring to the statement about building a wall again, between U.S. and Mexico by uh, by President-elect Trump. And I'm obviously introducing the idea of whether this attitude is reflection of Midat Stone. Are you putting the wall so, in Israel? So, uh, and that might be, that I'm might, okay. you might want to include that. Okay. The important thing about this is, first of all, we have to touch upon what it's a Jewish concept of, or the Jewish view of the evil of stone. By the very fact I'm asking that question, obviously the general perception that exists in the world of what Sodom is about, what the great evil of Sodom is about, it's not really an issue in that because the world basically considers Sodom, the great evil of Sodom, to touch upon homosexuality. homosexuality, sodomy, so forth. That's not the Jewish perspective. The Jewish perspective is stone is about mistreatment of the stranger. It's about a lack of compassion for others. So one thing we have to do is see how that story plays out from the stone, from the stone story. And then we have to understand the greater depth of that issue. Because one of the questions that exists with stone is why was it singled out by God? There was a lot of but evil... Th- it was, yeah, but, why, but why, why were these cities singled out? There were a lot of evil in that world, right? Um, well, you know, Egypt wasn't exactly a better country. God, everyone went down there and said, you know, um, Nimrod was the, was the king of Babylonia and so forth. But why specifically stone? And that all ties to what really was the evil of stone. And then it raises what I think is a very real um, issue in terms of understanding the dialectic involved in values that must exist in a true ethical perception of values. The problem I find in a lot of what happened in the United States in the last year or whatever is the fact that there was no dialogue. There was no there was yelling at each other. There was I'm right and you're wrong. No, I'm right, you're wrong, and so forth. There's no perception of a greater issue. And the fact is is that to me is a greater problem. Um Values within a Torah perspective comes out of a dialectic. <coughs> the dialectic being the tension involved in values. And what we're seeing in many ways, and it's on both sides of the fence, cool. it's the fact that people don't really understand the depth of an issue. So what I really want to deal with is the depth of, 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 uh, of this type of issue. So let's start with what really was the evil of stone. So the opening understanding of the evil of evil of stone is you have to understand the first statement of stone is that it was a societal system. Stone was not about um, lust or evil drives. Stone was about the creation of what they felt was a moral system. Okay, so a lot of commentators point out Soda, Stone, Sodom was a society with law and order. They had law and order. They had rules. And you hear the stories of Stone. You know, you hear about the woman who was, who was sentenced to be put on top of the roof and covered in honey so she'd be stung to death by the bees. Right? She helped someone. The fact of the matter is, is that was a decision by the court. She was a criminal. And the fact is, if you look about Stone, it wasn't about people who were, who were um, 
you know, basically uh, trying to, uh, you know, basically, you know, um, hooligans and, and lo- it was people who were basically saying, this is the law and this is the way society has to run. Um, this is the, the concept of the society. And what was the basis of the Sodomite society? Why did it feel it was necessary? So Stone basically had a principle. Okay, the Gemara, the, the Mishnah in Avot says that what's, if you say what's mine is mine and what's yours is yours, right, which would seem to be, you know, mine and mine, yours, that's an average. So the Gemara says that's a midat benini, that's an average person, or it's also midat stone. So what's wrong with what's mine is mine and what's yours is yours? So in certain ways I think about I am a rock by, you know, by... Uh, Simon Garfunkel. The fact of the matter is, is, is that the starting point is that I take care of myself. I don't have a responsibility to take care of you. And what really occurs in, in that society is the perception that um, people have to work for their, you know, for, for their um, upkeep or they have to be they have to. Uh, um, they have. They have. They have to earn their upkeep, and in a certain way, every society expects the members of a society to um, to be built by people who are all taking responsibility for themselves and then coming together to create a society. Yeah. Were there richer and poorer, or was everyone thereby what you've described? They weren't all equal. It was not a communist society. Okay. It was it was based, but it was based upon, I earn my stuff, you earn your stuff, and 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 I I don't infringe on you, and you don't infringe on me, okay. which is basically a a extreme protectionist society, going down to the individual. Okay, it is. Um, the extreme anti-socialist society. In other words, it is, I take care of myself, you take care of yourself, then we get together to, to, to interact as, uh, in, the, in the normal uh, transfer of property. I pay you, you pay me, and so forth. And that the person who thinks they're going to be taken care of by society is a freeloader. And that undermines society. Okay? Therefore, what happens to Stone is being charitable, caring for another because of need in the other. Basically, you perceive the freeloader as someone who's basically not carrying their weight, and that's wrong. Okay, now, let's get into the actual class of Stone. Where do we see that? And this ties into how Stone dealt with homosexuality. Lo takes in the guests. They were they were they were the the angels. Basically, people already knew, right? You don't go to stone because basically, you, you, you know, if you're, if you're, you're, you're yeah, you want to be you want to go pay for, you want to you know you want to get a hotel and so on, that's one thing. But if you're going to come and expect to be taken care of, well, that's not going to happen. It's the exact opposite of of Avram Avinu. Yeah. Yes. Okay, my understanding is he lived in stone. The okay. truth of the matter is there are issues about that where he says it, it says in the Chumash that he moved close to stone, but it right. seems from the story he was in stone. Okay. But the point okay. is, is that what's happening in stone, but Ram still, uh, Lot still had values from Avram's house. Avram would, would you know, people going, traveling, yes. right, and, and, and basically saying, listen, you need help. I'm, I'm glad to help you out, and so forth, right? And 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 the idea of caring for others, and hey, you're not alone. I'm here with you. I'm going to help you out. Stone believed that helping you out was basically being freeloaders, 
and you're supporting something that was negative, very negative for well, society. Don't, don't they help the elderly, own, their own, their no, no, kids. no, no. Ultimately, yeah. Storm did. Ultimately, Storm did not. Now, the truth is, and you get into issues of family and so forth. That, that how far Storm would would go? I'm, I, you know, that that, you know, you know, I'm sure that that Storm, if 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 a child was born in Storm as a you know as a baby, I'm sure the Sodomites took care of their baby. Babies, even though the baby couldn't carry his weight or her weight, but the fact is, is that there was a perception that people should carry their weight. Okay. What happened was, is these people showed up, the angels showed up, and they needed a place to stay. So Lot takes them in, which means he's obviously having some reflection of of Avram's house. Takes them in. The Sodomites get really upset. Sodomite says, "We want the 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 your your people. We want them." Now, what was it about? So it seems to be a fact that they say, "Hey, listen, we want to have a homosexual relationships with these people." For a stone's real thing, where they're lustful and they're interested in 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 in, in homosexual lust. But that's not really what happened there. Okay, one of the problems that already gives you an indication that that there's a problem with that perception is the fact that Lot offers his daughters, right? If they're homosexual and they're interested in gay, in, in gay relations, right? Why is he offering the daughters? So already you see something strange going on. What was the real issue of the sodomites? Nothing for nothing. These people have to pay, okay? We don't want freeloaders. It's not good for our society. It was societal value. No, freeloaders, they undermine our society. Society people have to pay. The Lord says, they don't have any money, they can't pay. So the Sodomites said, well, we'll have to use their bodies. We're not really interested in using their bodies, but for the, for, to make our point of, of, of nothing for nothing, we, 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 we're, we're going to use their bodies and they'll pay through their, through their bodies because they have bodies. That's when Lot says, wait a second, wait a second, take my daughters. Now, not, not with, that, that's not justified that he says, take my daughters, but he says, take my daughters, come on. You know, you know, you know, you know like, 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 come on, you guys really, really don't want this and so forth. So take my daughters and say, and, you know, he said, no, no, that's not the point. Yeah, of course, if this was a sexual issue, we'd rather, you know, have relations with your daughters. That's what we, if this was about sex, that's what we would do. But it's not about sex. It's about people paying for what they receive. It's about carrying your weight. So even though we're not really interested in this, we're going to make them pay through their, their, through their bodies. But as long that's, as they don't have a communal thing, like why can't Lot have his own guests? As long as he does, if he's paying because it's a fundamental. That's, 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 that's because the society said, right? Lots you don't have you don't count you don't have. It's not good to have people get something for nothing. It's the same way people talk in terms of welfare or something like that. There's the idea in terms of welfare. Welfare people take advantage of it, and there is there, there's someone an issue. You know, it's interesting. There's a there's a there, you know um, there's a rabbi by the name of Rabbi Aaron Levine. Um, there's a Rabbi Aaron Levine in Toronto, but the one I'm referring to is Rabbi Aaron Levine. Passed away, but he was but he was a professor of economics at uh, Yeshiva University and and also a Talmud Chacham and so forth. He wrote a variety of books on economics and halacha, and in it he talks about stone. And he points out this idea that 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 that's that this idea that Stone basically was arguing an economic system. It said they had an economic system. People shouldn't get anything for nothing. And, they, and his argument and, and and then R. Levine raises an issue. Like for example, there's a commandment of stucca. You're giving stucca. You have a commandment. The person comes up to you and says, "I need food. I need I need to eat." Okay. So you have an obligation, the Roman brings down in terms of staka, I need to eat. Okay, so you have an obligation to give him food. Right? The Jewish community has an obligation to give this person food. What happens if this person basically 
Hey, I was a guy who says, listen, uh, I spend my days uh, playing tiddlywinks. I don't need to work. I'm willing to go and get charity from the from the from, from the from the kupat staka and uh, live like that. So Ravar Levine brings up the issue: Could you go up to someone and say, you know, something? Go get a job, right? Which many people would argue. Listen, we want to help out with 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 welfare for individuals who can't work, but you you could work. You're just basically going for charity because. You basically are are just um, you made a choice. You made a choice, and you basically just look out. So the Ravar Levine points out on the halachas of staka, you can't do that in terms of food. In terms of further staka, when it gets down to issues of of of, of you know, in terms of certain of certain additions on staka, but he says certain basics of staka, an individual. You have to know about that individual. That's the halach of staka. Then you can start getting into reasons why that would be so. I mean, there's psychological issues and so forth because there's a perception within Judaism that people do want to earn their keep. That's a very fundamental aspect of Judaism. We believe that... that What's that difference in Aramaic? Lechem de Oh, I forget. I, I forget. The fact is, is that... Is that but, that's, but that's exactly why God didn't place us in Olam Haba because... God could have given us Olam Haba, he could have given us heaven right away. No, we should earn it. We should say it's ours. Better change. Right, yes, that's exactly right. I just forget the exact language. The language right. of the Gemara, yes. It's the language of, of the Gemara. I just forget it also. But, super, right, super something like that. Something like that. But the fact is, is, is that's a very fundamental concept within Judaism, that people want to earn what they receive. And the poor, the highest form of stuck is to make someone... And, and, and uh, all those things reflect the fact that we believe that people... Have a sense of 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 earning of of wanting the idea that but but say a person doesn't. Well, the fact is is that there's still an obligation of sucker. Then you can start saying maybe that's that's a further psychological issue to present. So I have to take care of them. But the point is, in stone, that became the value of stone, nothing for nothing, and that's exactly what happened with stone. Now the point is though, is that raises an, a real issue. Because stone becomes an issue where you have to, where, where you basically are saying that um, I have to earn, and, you can, and and therefore you you you, and therefore there's this idea that I don't like people getting something for nothing or over. So obsessed. but obviously there's a value within Judaism and Torah of assisting the other. Now, this is where it starts getting more complicated. In assisting the other, to what extent? And it becomes an issue of, when you assist the other, it means you're taking away from yourself. Now, for some people, Bill Gates, right? He assists the other. He's still using his money to assist the other. But let's face it, what's he he missing out? But the fact is, when you start getting into into people and so forth, it becomes an issue in terms of helping the other, and the the, the restraints on you, and and your family or something like that. So the truth is, is to what extent are you supposed to help the other? And how much is it really helping them if it's just a handout and they look at it? And that's and but that could, that's but home. but that but that's what Aaron Levine says. Mm-hmm. That issue cannot be a full issue. The point is, is that consideration that you're helping them to to become someone who doesn't take care of themselves, it can that be an issue after basic necessities, maybe. But on some level it can't be an issue. In addition to that, there's also the fact that people can help themselves. There's people with disabilities who basically unfortunately a lot of people with disabilities would like to help themselves out, but people don't see that. In terms of that, in terms of that aspect of disabilities, that they can help themselves out. But the point is, is what you begin to understand is how do you weigh your obligations, and then who has priority? When we talk in terms of tzaka, we say family members go first. Why? Because we say, listen, my priority in helping out people are people I'm connected to through family, through community, or something of that nature. But this already becomes an issue. But the fa- but the point is, it always gets an issue. There's a there's a sefer uh, called Shari Yavshu by Rav Shimon Shkup, 
who begins, who, who talks about as a Hagdama. And in his Hagdama, he points out that we're supposed to emulate God. Right? We're supposed to walk in God's ways. And how do we emulate God? The same way God is merciful, you should be merciful. Okay? Same as Baal, God is a, is a Baal Chesed, you should be a Baal Chesed and so forth. So, but then Rosh Hashanah points out, Rosh Hashanah was one of the Gedolim before the, before the Second World War. And, and he points out, but wait a second. God also doesn't have any needs. God is totally interested in helping out the other, but God doesn't have any personal needs. But you as a human being have personal needs. And this is identified in the famous Gemara, in the famous statement of, of, um, of Chayach HaKodim. Okay, there's a verse that says, Chayach HaImach, that, 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 that the Gemara Bab Metzir, Chayach HaImach, that, you, that the person should live with you, right? You help someone else with living with you. But your life comes first. And that's the famous story of there's only one, there's a bottle of water, only enough for one person, and there's two people. Who gets the bottle of water? Well, it's your bottle of water. You have to drink it. Yes, even at the expense of only saving your life and then the other person's health. That's Rabbi Akiva's position, right? Because, that's how it seems to be the halacha, because your life comes first. So the truth is, you have personal responsibility, and there's limits on staka. You can't give more than than twenty percent, with some exceptions. But the point is, is it becomes an aspect of balancing your needs with the needs of others, and then it also becomes an issue of prioritizing the needs as it extends out. From a Jewish perspective, it's not just the individual; the individual then is extended to family. And Rosh Hashanah points this out also, that the Jewish understanding is, is not simply, the understanding is just not self and other. It's not self and selflessness. It's that you are supposed to extend, extend yourself to include the other. So as he points out, is with family, it's not just I'm concerned about me, but I'm also, I, I also have to be concerned with the other, especially the family. It's the fact that yourself now encompasses family. That encompasses community. And really, as we develop in terms of the world, our issue should become the world issue. And we should want a total the whole world being taken care of. The same way we want ourselves to be taken care of because we're part of a greater collective. It's not me and and, and you. That's much more of a Christian concept, self and selfless. It's a fact that we extend our being that we are all one entity, okay? That we have, we we should be, that that who we are is the extended self, and that happens through Judaism, through family, community, nation, and then the world. Klal Yisrael being the extended extension of the self of the nation of Klal Yisrael, nation of Israel. And as you do that, though, then you have to deal with the issues of taking care of oneself and taking care of others. That's something Stone didn't accept. Okay, or or or, or it didn't extend. It, it, I should say it didn't ex- uh, understand that extension to the other. Stone understood the value of self. You got to take care of yourself. Okay, right in the extreme. So therefore, Stone had no perception of the other. Torah basically says the perception of the other, and yes, the other is an extension of self. Now this leads to what Stone was about. Stone was basically, I don't help the other. Now yes, there's a limitation to how much you can help the other. If you don't have money to help the other because you have to take care of your family, there's a limitation. But your desire should be to help the other. Yeah. The way I heard it, I want to understand, Stone were very, very rich. So they didn't want anybody coming to them because they want to block, they want to have a gate so nobody can enter their world. Yeah, uh, it, the, the, the thing is, is, is Stone basically was concerned about self. It did concern about self, and it didn't see the extension of self onto others. There is an aspect of Stone where you ask a question in terms of the society itself. It mostly began with self. It mostly extended some aspect of of community, the same way as, as even the most selfish community has to understand that there's needs of the community. We have to have roads, we have to have things of that nature, and so forth. 
the the um, the basic understanding of storm though is or, or to understand the fullness of storms of storms understanding you have to understand the concept of midat storm. What exactly is when the Gemara talks about midat storm? What is that term? The attribute of storm. So the point is is, is that we understand the tension when we give at the expense of ourselves, right? And therefore we understand that there's a certain point in time where we can't give, okay, because the cost to ourselves is going to be um, unacceptable. And that, and, and that does not mean equality, okay? It does not mean that the person who has some funds, who can afford a, 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 a luxury home, has to maintain absolute equality with someone else, Who's in this? Who's uh, the streets? The point is, is that there's needs of community, there's needs of individuals, there's needs of self. So the point is, is that there's an idea where I have to take care of my needs, and it's a psychological need. It's my need to be able to live my life as I want to do, with the recognition that that I have to be concerned about others, and then I have to balance how much I dip into my own take away from me to help others. But there's always the idea of taking away from me to help others. Is, right? Isn't there something within the concept of tzedakah to furnish tzedakah according to the level of life that these people receive? Right. There's an idea yeah. that it's still stuck to bring that person back to their life. But whether you have the obligation to do that, there's a, See, there's a limit, but there's a limit to how much you have to do. In other words, if if a person is accustomed to a to a certain luxurious lifestyle, and then loses everything, it is considered to still be stuck to help him out. And you know, as, as the Gemara says, you know, you know, he's used to traveling everywhere in a fanfare. So there's, it's still stuck if you if you try and bring that. But the point of the matter is, is at what expense should you take away from from your family's needs? Like, I've always pointed out to this, like, for example, if you're in Toys R Us buying, buying toys for your kids, a person comes in and says, you know, the money you're going to spend on these toys, um, if you give it to me, I can go, you know, you know someone needs food in, uh, in Africa. We can take that money and buy food for the person. Otherwise, that person will be hungry. So you have to say, well, you know, does your kid really need this toy? He, he you know, food. Okay, fine. So you sit there, and the first time it happens, you give, you give the money over. Then you go back and stand in line and still buy the toys. And so I'm still going. The person comes back and says, "No, no, no. That that money you're going to spend here." He comes back to you and says, "You know something? There comes a certain point in time where I'm going to buy the toys for my kid, even though it means I'm not going to be giving to that person in, in who, who, even though I'm not going to be giving to Africa. Why? Because you have a responsibility to family. You have a responsibility for the, for their." For their for their growth, and so there's a limit. Okay, the fact is, there's balancing of your needs versus the balancing of the needs of other, and it becomes all part of that, all part of that issue. Uh, yeah. Um, with respect to those needs. Yes. Uh, if you offer or get a person offered a job, mm -hmm. he says, "I don't want that job. I'm not interested." Are you still obligated? Yeah, that's what Aaron Levine says. On the most basic level of necessity, yes. Right? You still got to give him food. But then you can sit there and say, that's it. I'm going to give you food. but that, but, And I'm going to give you the most basic level food of what you need. You may not like the taste of that food, but then you think about it. But the point is, is that is that there is an idea of trying to educate that person that they should take care of themselves because there's a concept in Judaism of, first of all, like you, you said, of earning, uh, you're, you're earning your, your, your keep, of the value of earning, and also the concept of shonim atalos yechya. There's a concept of Judaism not like, of, not, of, of a person not wanting to be a taker. Okay, a person who hates gifts will live. That's that verse in Mishle. But the point is, is on a certain level, and the way I would explain that is, is that that person saying, I'm not interested in that, that itself is a reflection on some psychological issues and so forth and so forth. Maybe it's a lot more deeper. The fact is, it's much more complex. Now, the point is, though, this is a real balancing of, this is a much greater dialectic. 
Shemeshwal points this out. Shemeshwal points this out. The fact is, it's a greater dialectic. Okay, you have to know what your needs are, what the, what the other needs are, how much you balance it out, and so forth. And understanding there's a certain level of stucca that is at the expense of yourself. But the point is, is you still have to be concerned for self. Chayechi chayimach. Supposed to live with you. Okay? Stone was totally about taking care of themselves. That's it. I have no obligation towards the other. Now, the way it's understood is from Midat Stone. Midat Stone is considered to be a person who, when it's, even when it's Zenene, Zelo Chaser, he's not really interested in helping another person. What does that mean, Zenene and Zelo Chaser? It's a case where another person will benefit from the use of your property and you will lose nothing. <laughs> this person will benefit and you won't lose not anything. Okay? You have a property, you have, you have some property, okay, a person is squatting on that property, you don't use that property, it's no problem, and so forth and so forth, and the person is staying there for a couple of nights. Okay, should you go over to that person and say, you can't stay here. Well, what are you losing if I stay here? I don't care, it's my property. I don't want you on my property. Now, if the person's concerned that there might be damage to the property, then it's already, then, then, then there is a concern. Okay, if the person wants to rent out that property, and you're not allowing him to rent it out, that's not the situation. So, so the 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 Bartanur in explaining the the Mishnah in in in, in Pirkeiavos said this was well, this is why the person who says what's mine is mine is yours is yours he says it can lead to midat stone why because the person is so concerned about about taking care of his own property he says in stone there was. Fertile land all around stone, which technically was part of stone, but no one was using it. There was all this fertile land around stone. And stone would basically say to anyone coming through, we don't want anyone stop, uh, stopping on this land. Can't use the land. It's not, it's not affecting you one way or the other. You're not picking these apple trees from this land anyways. You're not using this land. Later when B'nai Israel were coming in, was it Moab or Edom? That's why we can't, they can't marry into us because they said they'll pay for any of the damage. Right, pay for the right, water, right. And they wouldn't right, let them go. Right. The fact is, so is that... Stuff, Edom and, and yeah, but that, that was a... That was a but that, was that, was that, that, that they still were. They were still was concerned because this was the invading army. This was, you know, you know the... the, but they, the they were just using the past. Yeah, but... but no, it went back to the whole rivalry. Right, it, right. It, there's a lot of issues involved, but you're you're right. It's a reflection of the same attitude in certain ways. But the point is, is what happened over there with Stone, the way the Bart Nur described it, is Bone, uh, Stone had all these fertile lands, and people wanted to move into the area. And That's Stone and, and Stone and Stone, so they let they let load in. But the, what, Stone, what, what Stone basically said, no, keep moving. They said, listen. You're not using these apples anyways. Let's take some apples. You're not going to use them. You have no reason. Then That's why it's called Zen Chaser. We can benefit from this and you won't lose a thing. Stone was so committed to it's mine, even when they wouldn't lose anything, they say it's mine. And that's an extreme attitude. Now the point is though, like right, okay, you're, you're, the, the fact is it's, that, that's something you have to be aware of. The point is, though, but the point is, is what this really leads to is you have to understand the dialectic and the de- depth of this issue. How do you balance your needs with the needs of others? Now, the reason I, brought, I asked that question in terms of putting up that wall is that many, many people, and this is, goes back to American protectionism. American protectionism, there's a side to it that is all we're interested in is Americans. Anyone else, who cares, right? So there are people who have attitudes that I only have to be worried about this group and people from another group, I don't care what happens to them. 
Okay, and there is an attitude like that of many people, and they and and they and they use arguments such as, "I want to help out the other," they think they're entitled or something like that. But the yeah, point but of the matter is, jobs, you know, that's yeah, that's yeah, ah, that's the point. Yeah. The fact is, is then it gets into the issue of the dialectic, but then it gets into a much more, uh, a much more, um, a much more deeper issue, as we get into nationalism and understanding nationalism. As I point out, let me just let me finish. As I point out, the 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 um, question: um, If a person in North Bay, a kid in North Bay, has some kind of problem and needs to go, needs to have a, a special surgery and so forth, and doesn't have the money to do, a family is is, is not wealthy and so forth, that kid in North Bay doesn't have a problem because what will happen? The kid will be brought to sick kids and have that surgery, right? A kid from Nicaragua, done. right? Pardon? He's done. He's not going to have that surgery. So you look at it and say, wait a second. Why should the kid from North Bay get that surgery and the kid from Nicaragua not get that surgery? The fact is, is you make a distinction because the kid from North Bay is in, in is even they don't pay taxes, even the family's on welfare. Okay, and let's say it's it's, it's, it's a, because right. So the fact is, we're making a distinction based upon nationality. The point is, is this is an aspect of the human condition, and this is something that 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 we have to understand of the issue in terms of general morality. One of the reasons Israel has such a hard time in the world today is because the ethics of our world today is based upon the Christian model. Now, what do I mean it's based upon a Christian model? Christianity had a hard time with nationalism. The statement, give unto Caesar what is Caesar, was not a moral statement. It was, it was basically a statement that says this world is irrelevant anyways. Nationalism is necessary in this world. But as a real morality, right, we should all be the same. We are all equal. That's one of the reasons also you see some statements in Christianity that it isn't, isn't so pro the family. Right? Why should this child be different than another child just because it's your child? How does the family, you know, so what? There's still two human beings. The point is, is, is that from a Torah perspective, we understand that there's a starting point. The starting point is the self. Now the big difference is, is that the, is that the reason the self is significant within Torah is because you have a responsibility to build up yourself. Okay, so your first obligation within Torah is that God has assigned you to develop yourself. Then you are also to develop humanity through the process. It starts with me taking care of my family. It starts then extends to me to be involved with the community. It then is very involved with my nation. And then it extends to, to, to universalism. But obviously my nation goes ahead of universalism and I have to know how I balance the needs of my nation with the needs of uh, uh, with the universal needs. Yes, on the universal level, there's no difference between the child in Nicaragua and the child from North Bay. On the national level, the child is Canadian. And that is the way we have to, because that's the way we have to develop, because we're going through a process of development. You, um, you had a question? Yeah. It's not, I don't think so much it's an issue of nationalism. A lot of Americans are saying, look, you know, America could sort of, you're right, there are some people who are saying no, no immigrants. Some people are saying, yeah, let's bring in a million or two million immigrants, but let's control where they're coming from. Yes. Like, it doesn't make sense for Mexico to bring in 500,000 because they're next to us, you know, and... And those are legitimate issues. Right. The, the point is, my argument in saying let's build a wall was not basically saying building the wall was wrong. That wasn't my point. My point was, what, what I'm trying to bring out is the fact that it's a real dialectic issue from a Torah perspective. There is a value of nationalism. Stone was not just about, I only take care of myself. Uh, or what Stone was about is, I only take care of myself. I don't care about anyone else. That's wrong. But if you want it, but in Stone, like, like for example, the way the Bart Neuer puts it is that Stone had this land that no one was using anyways, and they wouldn't let anyone use it. That's Zen, Nen, Nevezelo, Chaser. You're not using it. So why not let someone else use like we have it? Have all right. week that we end up right. so, ah, so the point is that that has a problem. But if but but in terms of saying, listen, 
this is my land, I need it to support, we need it for our country, we need it for our community, we, and therefore I can't just give it to you. That's, that's, already, uh, that's already an argument. But you have that balancing of that argument. Y yes? I have a question actually that still dates back to Lot himself. And it, I, I get, you know, Abraham and Lot had to part, okay? And Stone accepted Lot. Yeah. How did they do that? Do we have Gemara or Midrash to tell us how Lot came to be accepted? I, I've Stone? never seen some, but the fact is, I think Lot basically. Um, had wealth when he came to when he came. In other words, he he so he, he bought his way in, so to speak, by showing that he he, had he, he would be. It's like, it's like in Canada, you can get uh, right citizenship right. if you are rich. You can you can, you you have the truth. Of the matter is, is some some concerns some concerns, but the point of the matter is some concerns. And then Lo, and then Lot became a judge and so forth. A, a nation has a right to make certain rules. In the, you know that that furthers the 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 idea of the nation, okay. And my point about the family: yes, I have a right to buy my kids toys, right? The fact that I buy my kid a toy doesn't mean I have to buy everyone else a toy. You know, the more the the the, the, the unfortunately asks the question: Bahafta the reicha kamocha. You're supposed to love your neighbor as yourself, right? So what is what, what does that mean? Love your neighbor as self. So if I buy myself a car, I gotta buy everyone else a car, right? Is that what it means? Love your neighbor as yourself. So yeah. I'm loving myself. I, I just bought a car. You have to love yourself first. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is, so the marshal learns it, and the before will sit there and say, if you look at it, if that's what it meant, love your neighbor as yourself, which means as they see yourself equal to every to, to every person, and if you're going to get yourself something, you got to get everyone something. It should see. It should be vahafta. Et reicha, kamocha. Okay, okay. The marshal would say you have to do that. Hafta lo reicha kamocha means the same way you respect your own individuality and your own individual needs. Respect the individual needs of the other person. Respect him as a human being. That's the way the marshal understands hafta reicha kamocha. And the point is, is is that, but that the fact is, is obviously. There is a concern for the universal within Judaism. There is, and that's and that's Shemesh Wolf's starting point. The same way God is Rachum, you should be Rachum, and so forth and so forth. But you also have to understand that it can't be in a vacuum. It has to be in terms of a dialectic. You can't get so much stuck that you, in the end, have to be. Uh, and, 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 and 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 for that's exactly say that the twenty percent rule is so you don't become a need. But the fact of the matter is, you have to recognize that your need. Is not you know your need is not just food. Your need is in terms of the psychological development of your family and so forth and so forth. So there's a lot of issues involved. But the fact is, it's a balancing of your need and I think given the fact that your responsibility is to yourself first. Why did twenty percent? The twenty percent was was the limit. The limit okay, uh, one, one of the ways we give myself twenty percent. The more twenty percent. Yeah, we have we have. Asr if you the, one of the one of the places the Gemara learns it from is a pasuk by by Yaakov. Mm -hmm. It says Asr and 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 the Gemara says, you see, he was going to give ten percent and ten percent. That was the limit, twenty percent. Now the truth of the matter is, it's an interesting Shiloh. If you're Bill Gates and you're Jewish, I say right, can you give more than twenty percent? Because giving more than twenty percent, you know, you know, it, it's you're still. You're, you're not going. So the truth is, it's actually machlokas and poskim. Okay, I, 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 there, there are poskim who say, no, twenty percent is the law, and there's other people who say, no, twenty percent is the, is the, uh, is the guideline. But if you, but if, but you, if you, if you're not going to be in that situation, you give more than twenty percent. But then there's other arguments to say you can give more than twenty percent anyways if it's. If it's specifically because you want to be mechaper in a certain avera, you can give a little bit over twenty percent. If you, if you, um, you know, different arguments of that nature. And then he also gets 20 into after tax, right? yes, yes, twenty yes. percent of your income. It's actually it's twenty percent of your income after taxes. The truth is, there's an interesting book that was put out by the Association of Jewish Scientists, which was much more on 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 accounting. The book is called Meisik Safim. 
and it actually is like it's like a, it's like a uh, a a, a, a uh, it's like a tax code, <laughs> like, like basically saying what are the legitimate deductions on the twenty percent and what can be counted towards the twenty percent. No, but Rabbi Tal Sun wrote another book on, on charity. But this this is this was the first book I heard about called Meister Safim and it dealt with it dealt with issues what you pay for with those twenty percent. Like for example, if you're paying for tuition for your kids, okay, can you pay that out of the twenty percent? So the fact is it's not so simple. Because the point is with ten percent Meister, ten percent is the is the is the basic so the truth is it's not so simple. There's aspect of what you pay in tuition that is really for the better. It's really you carrying the weight of other students because we raise the tuition of people who are paying the tuition to help out the needs of the school. So this, so the, the actual education of your kid might be X amount, but the tuition of the school might be Y. So the the difference between Y and X, you can and it gets into various other issues. It's a very technical work. I read part of it. Four kids in the article. How do you save? That's actually a book. It's yeah, a book. Yeah. yeah. How do you save for child number two when you're totally financing child number right. three? And and, so and these are. So effectively, it says cut in half. So you have you have to. Yeah. No. Well, cut the amount that you get. <laughs> well, if you can, but the fact is, it's a real, it's a real, it's it's a real legitimate issue. But the point is, is that what I want to get at is that Judaism obviously is very caring. And so forth, but the fact is, is the difference in Judaism really begins with the recognition that we're here to build up the world, and if we we have a responsibility in this world to build up the world, lo toho baral the shevet yisar. God did not create this world for nothing; it created it created it to be civilized and inhabited. So we have to build up. We have, to, and we also have responsibilities. We're supposed to we're supposed to you know peruvu miluud arsikishuha. Go out there and build up the world. So the point is, we have responsibilities as individuals. So we are supposed to develop ourselves, and then we extend our development of ourselves to assisting uh, to to our families and so forth and so forth. It raises another perspective, and therefore our understanding of the ethic is not just giving. It's not just about giving. It's not just about selflessness. It's about responsibility in the development of the world. And that includes my responsibility to myself, my responsibility to the people closer to me, and then and then it works through nations and so forth. So the fact is, is that on a certain level, a country can create certain rules for um, for immigration. It can create, certain, but the, on the other hand, those rules have to be permeated with a sense of chesed and a sense of caring for others. That's why, and, and, and you really see this, in, I was getting back to in terms of Israel, Israel has a real problem because of this, because Israel is extremely nationalistic. The ethic of the world doesn't understand nationalism. Because the ethic of the world flows from Christianity, which, never, which really doesn't have nationalism. So Israel, by being extremely nationalistic, people don't really understand it. On the other hand, as a country, Israel is very, very sensitive to universalism, to the world. And a lot of people don't understand that either. If you're so nationalistic, how can you care about others? The point is, it's like it's like um, the new ambassador, the new you know, um, proposed ambassador to Israel, um, Friedman. Friedman, made a statement that most Palestinians would really like to live under an Israeli world, so, uh, under Israeli rule. So obviously, that's going to get a negative response from certain people in the press. They don't understand is that there is a good there is a strong segment of the Palestinians who want to be under Israeli rule because under Israeli rule then all they continue having civil rights because the other side of that of that Israeli yeah it could be nationalistic in terms of Arab but there's also a possibility for it to be um, uh, fundamentalist Islam such as the Hamas you know the fact is is that is that it was a real problem for for liberals in America what happened in Egypt. Okay, if you if you if you watch the way um, liberals in America, like, like someone like, like like President Obama dealing with what happened in Egypt with the with the, with the Arab Spring, with the Arab Spring, what happened was, was here the advancements of democracy. Great democracy, they're all interested in democracy. In Egypt, what did democracy bring about? 
the election of the Muslim Brotherhood, which basically was the election of fundamentalists, of Islamic fundamentalists, jihadists, and so forth. So the army had to take over. And if you watch the news at that point in time, it was very interesting watching the subtle way that people had to deal with it. Because on one hand, everyone was happy that the army took over. Right, because under the Muslim Brotherhood, what you had was basically a imposition of a fundamentalist order which didn't have any human rights. On the other hand, it was against democracy. So, if you, I remember watching this so much during that time about how people dealt with it, how the media had to deal with it subtly. Uh, no, no, you know, democracy. And so they couldn't just come out. They couldn't come out and say. Democracy doesn't work. Democracy doesn't work if the majority does not respect the rights of the minority. That's an absolute fact in in, in democracy. And people don't understand when Winston Churchill says democracy is a terrible system of government, but it's the best one we had. He knew what he was talking about. One of the fundamental principles for democracy to work is that the majority has to respect certain basic rights of the minority. Okay, and that, and that's something people don't recognize. And and people don't want to be reminded of the fact that Hitler came to power. Right. Ilya Bashamo came to power through democracy. Um, Plato hated democracy because basically democracy means that every um, any idiot can vote. I remember, I remember watching uh, this. There was this old TV show called L.A. Law. You guys remember this show, L.A. Law? Okay. So, what, so I was a big fan of L.A. Law. And there was a guy in L.A. Law who played a, a person who was uh, mentally challenged, Benny, who, who, who played a mentally challenged thing. And there was a subplot in one of L.A. Law where the election was coming up and, uh, and, uh, and he, he, and they said, who are you going to vote for? And he says, my, my, mommy, my mother says I'm not smart enough to vote. No, everyone should vote. And it was a whole thing about how these these lawyers worked to get Benny signed up to vote, and, so and the and the end of the show was was Benny going into a voting booth to vote, and it was and it was like the crescendo. Benny has a right to vote. Here's a guy who you wouldn't like make a decision about affected your life. You sit there and say, "Listen, would you let this guy decide anything in your life?" Most likely not, but he has a right to vote. If people don't understand. Now, the truth is, is then comes the issue, well, what's the other alternative? And this was Churchill's point. Is any idea of trying to create a rule system of how you only limit the vote to certain people causes other problems. So it might be that, yes, there's a problem with letting someone like Benny vote, but the alternative of putting up rules on voting is worse. Right? So the point is, but people don't recognize that. The, the real depth of issues people don't want to, don't want to deal with. So the truth is, is, is that's what gets me these days. Protection, there is an idea of universalism and so forth and so forth. I think that some of the language that's been stated is a little bit rhetorical and really doesn't deal with the point. But the fact is, is, is that, yeah, there, there's issues of how you deal with immigration and so forth and so forth. There's a, there, there's a concept of being concerned about society. And then there's a concept of being concerned about others. But maybe the whole issue I have, mm -hmm. the ability to vote should not be an entitlement. There should be parameters around it. Yeah. Otherwise, you you're going to set your parameters. But how do you set your parameters? Uh, yeah. The parameters... You have to find a way to set parameters. And, and, and the point Otherwise, was... You said, and you that's... Have any idiots voting. And, and Winston Churchill said basically that's the problem. When he said it was crazy, and, and Plato had that problem. So Plato, Plato basically wasn't a big fan of, of, of democracy and, and that, and because he really didn't like what happened in Athens. And he felt that Socrates, you know, what happened to Socrates was an aspect of democracy gone wild. But the truth is, is that you don't have another option. I mean, the point is, is that's part of the option. That's part of the problem. If you look at the board of the banks, mm -hmm. you might have 60 people on a board. And and you know that a percentage are idiots. But the fact of the matter is, as much as it says the board calls the shots, the shots are called before it ever goes to the board. The board is there for, for sign-off. Okay. At certain levels. But ultimately, your executive committee is hand-picked, such as Trump is hand-picking 
You're, you're right. It's cabinet. You're right on a certain level. You're right on a certain level, but the fact is, you're not just talking about the bank. The yeah, fact that matters. To that point. You're talking about the greater needs of society. The truth of the matter is, is that do I want the board of the bank or the executive committee of the bank making decisions about my life? I, I, I want them. Right? I make an argument that people who. I'd rather have people who most people consider idiots voting than a lot of intellectuals. Okay. Um, because quite often intellectuals are shielded from the um, consequences of their voting. You know, quite often they'll have tenure, they'll have jobs. You know, every who is who is have, considered yeah. who is considered to be which president of the last fifty years? Um, okay, for the last fifty years, was considered to have the highest IQ. Well, it might have been Carter, but he knows nothing about the real world. Thank you. Jimmy Carter is considered to be the president with the highest IQ. Okay? Not Bill. No. <laughs> really? Jimmy Carter is considered to be the president with the highest IQ. Wow. And he couldn't make a practical decision. Obama, Obama is, a, is, is a very bright individual. Right? The fact of the matter is, is, is that, listen, as a human being, I think he has a lot of a lot of uh, understand. I understand a lot of his values, his considerations, and he talks with certain type of thing. I think his decisions, because he can't understand the problem of Islamic fundamentalism, because there's 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 he doesn't want to go there because that that involves a, an understanding of human personality. That he's not willing to go there. It's a problem. That's part of the I issue. So the pra the fact is is that when you're gonna deal with democracy, you're gonna have the issue. The bank is much more limited. And in the end, in the bank, if they don't make proper decisions, you're gonna have bankruptcy. Now the truth of the matter is there are a lot of people who feel the banks were punished enough for the last recession we had. Because you had banks making decisions that were only for the banks that basically ruined everyone else. So there's a lot of critiques of how the banks weren't properly Punished for their decisions in dealing with the 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 the, the economic, um, uh, they they basically worked with only concern, but their job was to be concerned about the bank. That's the job of the board of a bank. They're concerned about the bank. Okay, you know Trump made a very interesting statement that I don't think people really understand. Or other people made the statement as well. Trump basically said he didn't pay taxes. And people said Trump didn't pay taxes. Right? Now, Trump, now people said he was smart and so forth. Trump said, you know something? That's the job of government to get me to pay taxes. If the laws of the government are such that I can work around it legally, then why not? That's what, now, now the truth is, is that there's actually a Canadian court decision where where uh, uh, where a guy where where the co co the guy came to court and basically used every loophole in the book to get around paying taxes, and and people said we well, you know it wasn't really meant for that the law didn't mean that and so forth and so forth, and the court came out and said you know something, the tax the taxpayer has the obligation, the court came out and said the taxpayer has the obligation to limit his taxes or her taxes, and if you're able to get around it you're able to get around it. It's a job of government to make sure that you, people can't get around exactly, this well, easily. That's exactly what Trump said. I mean, right. where he didn't pay taxes, it was clearly a benefit to every high income earner. It, it wasn't. And, and therefore, and therefore, the point is, is it's my, it's it's a job of government to clear away those those. Which is why he said, take away. He's that already. Executive he's order, already. And he's fine. Yeah. The fact is, is he's already working towards that. But the point is. Is that's where you start getting into greater depth. See, what hits me when they talk about the wall in Mexico and so forth and so forth, there's a side to it, you know, that, that when people sit there and say, because all Mexicans are drug pushers. Wrong. There are Mexicans who just want to eat. And, they, and they're willing to come over and work and eat. The, pro, the thing is they're taking jobs away from Americans. If they're taking jobs away from Americans, or you have to figure out... How to, how to make it legal and so forth and so forth. But the point is, is, is then you get into the issue of nationalism versus universalism. And yes, you should be concerned about the universal needs of every human being. There is a value, but it's a, not a value that lives in a vacuum. 
Okay, it's a value that lives in the greater understanding of, of, the, of the intentions of every human being, starting with self-concern, which is also the, also the way we were created by God. The point is, and, 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 and the truth is, the Shari Yashur, the Shem Shikon points out also, human beings have a natural idea of self-concern. That's why God created us. Because human beings need self-concern. But on the other hand, right, on the other hand, you have to, you have to be concerned about others. Mahu rachum hayu you got to be caring. And that's a dialectic, and it's not easy. And therefore, and therefore, the, the, but but what you hear is people arguing. When I hear people argue, every Mexican is a is is a drug pusher. But who argues uh, that? Trump said they're bringing in those those types of people. Yeah. So, well, I, if I make the argument that Europeans are bringing in doctors, and yeah. lawyers to Canada, and they're, I'm not saying they're all doctors and lawyers. Yeah, I, 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 you, by the way, the, 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 you're absolutely correct. Yeah. I'm not making that argument, but people want to make that argument to defend why they're being that, why they're being, why, why they want a wall, because they're trying to sit there and say, oh, we're we're going to we're going we're gonna to keep out people who are bad anyway. Right, that argument. exactly. And the fact is, and that's, is that, and, and that's one of the things I'm really upset with Trump about, because I think that Trump should take it as a, as a number one priority in his government to attack the white supremacists. I think you should be coming out every day by saying, and this guy is blankly, blank, 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 and not and those, all those guys who are white supremacists who made any statement, they said, if I had my wills, I wish I would throw that guy in jail. I would like to hear Trump make some really, really strong statements that separates him from, from racists and so forth. The fact of the matter is, is it's a, it's a real tough situation. It's too broad, right, it's, so it's a very, but the point is, is, is that on the other hand, People in Mexico who need food are also human beings. Now, Torah deals with that dialectic. But the point is, is it's, a, it's a real issue. Nationalism, as part of an ethic, is really not understand, understood within a Christian perspective. And therefore, it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't fit into the... Into, into the, into the um, um, into, in, into, um, the world's perspective. So liberals are universalistic. But they're, all, all human beings have to be I'll equal, back, but they're not. I'll go back to this issue. I, when I was reading the election, I was reading a lot of articles by people who live in the southern states. Yeah. And they're saying nothing against Mexicans, but just logistics, they come, you know, they're in certain towns, they could, they have a lot of problems with hospitals and so on. Right. And when they talk to the liberals, the Democrats have absolutely no interest in them. In the words of Hillary Clinton, they're part of the deplorables. Yeah. Okay, so all this thing that you know they're really concerned about the universal ethic just bringing the Mexicans to some extent it may be true, but a you know they, they'll tend to vote left wing and right because, they, because they're not concerned at all quite often about people who's, who deal with the consequences of that. Right, and and the fact so is I, is and 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 the, and the point is is that because these people are part of the nation, they actually have a priority as part of the nationalistic concern. And that should be a statement. The fact is, is that is that what happens is, is that you know the point is, is that, is that you know you're, you're concerned about jobs, like you know people have to eat it anywhere. The point is, is, is that having national concern means I have to be concerned about my people eating first, my nation eating first. That doesn't mean I'm not concerned about you eating. Okay, it doesn't mean that I'm only concerned about my nation eating, but the fact is, you're right. You're 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 absolutely right, and 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 that's part of the, that's part of the the balance, and that's really the issue there. Stone was an extreme. Starting back with our original statement, Stone was the extreme protectionist. What's mine is mine, what's yours is yours. I don't give a hoot about you. It's not right. In fact, that is extreme evil. When I asked about why stone was specifically destroyed by God, because that kind of concern, right, there's no hope for. Because basically, um, you know, the Gemara says, really the mission, Kayan. what? Kayan. Yeah, but, 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 but the fact is, you're right, but, but the fact is, is, is that stone is, for example, for example, the, the, the Mishnah, the Mishnah says, the person who says, what's mine is mine and what's yours is mine, 
is a Russia. So who's worse, the Sodomite or the Russia? So there's an interesting aspect about the Russia. What's mine is mine, what's yours is yours, basically says... Okay, what, what, what I'm saying about Stone. What's family lawyer. What, what mine is mine and what's yours is yours. Basically says, I don't have to have any connection with you. I don't want anything from you. Right? I'll take care of myself, you take care of yourself. I can live on a desert, I can live on an island, you live on your island, I don't give a who what happens to you. The Russia says what's mine is mine and what's yours is mine. But there's an interesting aspect about the Russia. The Russia wants to relate. The Russia wants to take from you. The Russia wants yours. Russia? The Russia. The Russia. No, not Russia, the country. You mean. <laughs> there you go. The point is, is as long as the Russia wants something from you, he's got to relate. Mm-hmm. And therefore, that's why I point out that, 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 that um, um, there's an interesting... Uh, a person, I heard a person once make the connection between this Mishnah and and the uh, and the four sons from 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 the Haggadah. Okay, and the four sons of the Haggadah, there's the there's the uh, one the, the the there's one who's the, who's the Chacham. It's like the Chassid. He says, "What's all this about?" and so forth and so forth. And then there's the Tam, which is sort of saying, "What's it about?" and so forth. Then there's then there's the the Russia. Who says, What are you doing all this for? And it's he gave a chin of you, give him a good smack. Right? And then there's the fourth child. The fourth child is doesn't know how to how to ask the question. So there's two very interesting viewpoints in the fourth child. Is the fourth child the youngest child just doesn't know how to ask the questions, therefore you gotta treat him nicely and so forth, you know, try and educate him and so forth and so forth. Because 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 all you okay. Because what does the mission the what is the, what is the mission they'll say? The Pusik that's quoted for the Russia is the same Pusik that's quoted for the child who doesn't know how to act. Right? Bavurza, okay, because of this, God took me out of Egypt. That's the answer you give the Russia, and that's the answer you give the 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 the, 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 the So there's a lot of important proportion to point out because they're really this they're, they're the same. So what's the difference? The Russia still wants to mock you, right? The still the Russia still needs you so he can laugh at you. He's 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 like what's mine is yours. What's my what's mine is mine, and what's yours is mine. I still need you to steal from you. I still have to use you. I still want to take from you. Therefore, you get him back. How do you get him back? He gave it shinov because he since he since he's still putting his 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 face into your world. You still have a chance to smack him. The one who doesn't know how to act, that could be meat at stone. I don't care what you do. I'm not asking because I don't give a hoot. I do my thing, you do your thing. I don't have to ask you what you're doing. I don't really care what you're doing. Right? You do your thing, I do my thing. And that person you can't even relate to. That's so the truth is, is Russia is even... So the point is, is, is that that's where meat at stone does. And that's why meet at stone, why God basically said that's it for stone. Because they basically cut off any 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 connection to humanity. The parallel yeah. that is they always say the door of Mabul and the door that built the tower. Why did you get rid of one and the other? Because at least at least the tower people they were relating to each other. Yeah. The he fact is, is that no, yeah, he let them live. Right, right, Why right. Why you get rid of the Dharma? only care about themselves and their own. You know, right, you know. right. Well, well, that's the same argument. Anyways, but that's but that's anyways that's that's uh, that's why that's why all I want to point out is is that um, we live in interesting times and we have to see the dialectic. Um, we want to question. see that. Yes. Well, you mentioned about the child from North Bay as opposed to a child from Nicaragua or whatever. Yet now we're having, so is it a change of values or just certain groups? Now we have, like, the Herbie Fund. We do go around the world bringing children here to help them. With, with, but the difference is in North Bay, the government pays. The fact of the matter is there's a universal aspect, and the truth is there's nothing wrong with saying the universal aspect. Herbie Fund is donations of private. And, 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 the, and, and it could be a tax deductible receipt, so therefore the, our society says there is a universal. The thing is, if you look in terms of Israel, 
Israel is still concerned about universalism. Okay, even though they are strongly nationalistic. The Jewish people are strongly nationalistic, but they have a universal side to it. They understand that nationalism is not the expense of universalism. But the point is, is that you have this, you have this extended perception of, of, of balancing nationalism and universalism and how you balance it out. Okay. Yeah. So what about the issue of Kodafi being universal? You're creating a lot of resentment, okay, because Kodafi could be, you know, perceived as being patronizing. Yeah. All, so that's all a real concern. It's all a real concern because universalism, if it's associated with, with um, a, I'm helping you out, that's, that, that, that has, that, that's the same aspect in Stucca. The fact of the matter is, in giving Stucca, there's a way of giving Stucca which is looked upon very negatively, saying, hey, you, here's money and I, I'm great because I'm helping you out because you're a, uh, you're, you, you don't have the ability to help yourself out. So, really, so the point. Answer. Right. That's not our way, our way is anonymously and, and exactly, that's exactly it. Because of concern for dignity of the person and therefore and that's part of the concern. The fact is is that in many ways people who who then say I'm gonna take care of the other do so in such a way that I I I'm I'm gonna help you because I'm better that's than right. you or whatever. Yeah. There's that hierarchy and there's the hierarchy of to whom to give yes. in order. Right, and it starts with family. And it starts with family. Right, which, which is a reflection of family, community, nations, a reflection of, of your concerns and your connections, and that reflects the idea. The point is it reflects a greater depth in understanding the human condition, and that's what's it. So that's what I wanted to point out, that on one hand, um, people should be aware of the problem with protectionism in the extreme. You can't just be concerned with your own. But the fact is, is that there is a perception of the place to be concerned for your own. Yeah. I want to add something. This parasha, Vaishlah, yes. Yaakov, 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 the meeting. Yeah, well, last week's parasha. Yaakov wanted to give the Yaakov a lot of gifts. Yaakov said, Yes, Yaakov. What he means, Yaakov said, I have a lot. But I like more. Okay. And Yaakov says, Yes, Yakol. I'm satisfied. Mm -hmm. And this is a big difference. Like if you say of a nation like America, and they say, I, I have a lot, but I want more because you're I absolutely correct. People were taking from you're me. absolutely correct. The fact of the matter is, is an idea of Ezehu Asher Shomayach Bechelko. Who's the one who's really rich, the one who's happy with what? The truth of the matter is you also have to know your needs. The point is, is that is as I mentioned beforehand, taking care of your family. That doesn't mean, you know, that I had to give my family every every person in my family has to drive a Lamborghini. You know what I mean? Yeah, especially 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 if 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 there are people starving. I mean the truth is is that is is that um that's that's an issue with Machla Nechilian from the story of Root, and you know, and so forth and so forth. That, hey, yeah, it was hard times and so forth and so forth. But you know something, yeah, you have to take care of yourself. But the fact is, there's also needs in the society. Okay, the point is, you're absolutely correct. Okay, you have to know what you need and so forth. But at some point in time, Yaakov also recognized what I need. You know, Yaakov basically was. Also know what he needed for his family, and he made a deal with Lovin, and Lovin tried to play him around, but Lovin, but Yaakov still, we're going to make this deal work, because he recognizes, you know, there's an interesting aspect of it, about Jewish concepts. Our office developed wealth. Wealth is not necessarily a bad thing. You need wealth. You know, the, the, Gemara, the Gemara says, it says, um, stami, right? It's actually coming up with, with, with the story of... Um, it actually was the story last week with Yaakov when 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 a, when Esau's son, I think it was Eliphaz, was tasting him and said, "My father says I have to kill you. What am I supposed to do?" So Yaakov says, "Take all my money." That's why Yaakov didn't have any money. What do you think? He left Yitzchak without having some resources. No, he's taking all my money. Why? Because uh, and therefore you can say to your father, "Yaakov's dead." Because Ani can make on me. Why is Ani can make on me? Why is a poor person considered to be dead? Because he doesn't have the ability to act. Because his power to act is limited, because of, because of his lack of resources. So one of the answers given 
is the fact that there's a value in having resources. So wealth is an aspect of the resource to be able to do the Ratz and Hashem, to be able to act. But on the one hand, you have to recognize that you have responsibility with wealth, okay? And you have to know how to act properly, and you have to know what you really need. You don't need Lamborghinis for all your kids, okay? You know what I'm saying? Okay? Hmm? A new car would be fine. Okay. How do you explain the, let's say, the Jews become so powerful around the world and so rich? It's not like something is not sitting well with the percent of Jews and how much power and money they have in the world. That's a different Chabura. <laughs> Um, I know, I know, but relatively, hurt, though. relatively, if you look, you I don't see think it's a real power. simple explanation. I think it really is another whole bubble. Yes, and and, and, and and there's also something else. Okay. It's not necessarily an accurate okay. statement. There, exactly. there are a lot that there are a lot of issues like that. No, no one recognizes how much poverty there is within the Jewish community. There is a certain amount of poverty in the Jewish community. There's a lot of weakness and so forth. But there's another aspect like this. Okay, if something happens in the world, what do we really believe is behind what happens in the world? Kodesh Baruch Hu. Okay, so, so the point is, is that you're asking a question, why is Kodesh Baruch Hu? Now the truth is, is one of the major distinctions, and this is something, um, Malcolm X, remember Malcolm X from the 60s? Mm-hmm. He got in a whole bunch of problems with, with, with the nation of Islam and so forth and so forth. But before he, everyone thought he was a big anti semitic before he died, he did tshuva on his anti semitism. Okay? He was killed, first of all. Yeah, I know, before he was killed, he was, did tshuva on his anti semitism. Because yeah. what did Malcolm House recognize? He said, You know something? What am I upset with the Jews? They came over and they built up themselves. They didn't come over like the, like the white man who was a slave owner. They didn't do that. They came over and they worked on their own. The fact is, is one of the reasons. Jews develop is because of value in Judaism of working, developing, and so forth. Because it's tied to the value of development. Now, whether the development should be in money or something like that, but you have to recognize that Jews believe that there's a value in developing the world. Okay? That is not a value within Christianity. Because Christianity does not see any value in this world. Yeah, Christians went after wealth, they, they, they went after, but the fact is, you have to understand the value of the Jew gives to development of themselves, which includes education, which includes which includes developing their ability to help others. Well, it's really the spirit. Pardon? It's the entrepreneurial uh, spirit. Yeah. Well, that's that's, that's, yeah. Great, but the fact of the matter is, is that's part of that's part of the Jewish perspective because we believe in the fact that we should develop. And we have an idea of developing the world. Rav Cook, Rav Cook, Rav Cook had a real issue with the Chilutzim. Okay, with the Chalutzim. Mm-hmm. When he came over in Eretz Yisrael. Yeah, they weren't Shomer Shabbos. They were very, very anti-religious. But he looked at them and said, look what they're, they're doing. The look what they're doing. Not just developing the land. For them, right? but, but not but, but 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 wait a sec wait a sec yes. the fact is they felt there was a value in developing the land mm-hmm. they felt there was a value in developing it mm-hmm. they came over and worked so Ruf Cook looked at it and said wait a second in their neshamas there's something Jewish in that neshama right. okay and that was a major thing that drove, drove him because he says what these guys are working towards is a reflection of what he considered to be a Yetzir Tov. Because developing life, building up the land of Eretz Yisrael, he understood to be a positive. reflection of a positive value. Well, for, for, right. Furthermore, like for Kiyoluk, we, we looked at, at least my grandparents, what's, what I earn is mine, but what you earn is yours. Yeah, we were counter to welfare state. Well, but, but, didn't, but didn't consider it's it's in, well. The truth of the matter is, is is that there's a concept of Shomer of Shomer 
of 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 Sona Natana Shechia, that we should not want handouts, we should work for ourselves. But it's interesting because the Chassid says, "What's mine is yours, and what's yours is yours." But it starts with, "What's mine is yours." There's a recognition that I have to have some aspect of dominion and a recognition that I have to take care of myself as well. Okay? The but thought of a handout was sinful to them. And, and, and you're, you're, yeah, on the other hand, on the other hand, you have to recognize that, the, that, that there's, also, there's also limitation to that. The truth is, is that the idea of, of not allowing someone else to assist you when you are in need is also not the greatest thing in the world. The Rambam talks about that as well. The fact is, is he says he understands why people who who are in need and don't want to. But on the other hand, you got, you know, the fact is, is that if you are in a situation where you need some assistance, then that's the value of the community also. But it's it's, it's not so black and white that it's absolutely bad. The truth of the matter is, is, is that people need help. Now, the truth is, we sometimes make mistakes. I see this involved. In my in my involvement with the Yad Chazaka, which is the Jewish, which is a which is a Jewish disability organization, okay, well, Yad Chazaka. No, I, no, I know, but it's an organization. It's Sharon Wayne's organization, in oh, in, in you know Yad Chazaka, which is which is a Jewish an Orthodox Jewish disability organization, and they point out mm-hmm. that yes, there's an aspect of caring and chesed and so forth, but the other aspect of that is recognizing the dignity of the individual who wants to build up themselves. So what they talk about is assisting others reaching their goal, which is a greater form of, of helping out. I agree okay. with you, but right. the incentive for our grandparents is they didn't have a community. The Gentiles wouldn't help out. Right, yeah, you're right. So and, and Their biggest motivator is I got to do something. Absolutely, for and that, and, my that family, and that, and, and that, and that. It's not going to come, like including right. Adam's father, right? Right, and the, but, but the fact is, the That's fact right. is, is that, is that what I'm pointing out is, but, but wait a second. There's a difference between what people did, imbued with a certain Jewishness from their home and so forth and so forth, and the understanding of the of the of the of the theory of Jewish values and so forth. You're absolutely correct. Jews had an idea of of taking care of themselves. Because That's part, of, but but it, it also came about from values within Judaism, okay, of wanting to earn and so forth and so forth. But you also have to recognize that there was a communal concept as well. That's why Jews helped others. That's also why Jews, in almost every Jewish community in America, one of the first things that was developed in terms of a chesed organization was. The Free Loan Society. Why? As that was considered to be the more dignified way of helping out someone. You give him a loan, so therefore he can pay you back and maintain his dignity. That's all part of the Jewish concept, and that's part of the Jewish value. That's a very real idea, but it permeates the Jewish, but it comes from the Jewish value that this world has value. That we have to build up this world, and we have to build up ourselves. We are supposed to develop ourselves. And that comes from the Jewish value that we have a purpose in this world. Okay. Great.